What's going on guys, Balkan Architect here and in today's video we're going to be talking about how to create the surroundings for your Revit models. Uh, now this is something that's a popular topic, I get asked a lot about this, how, how do you generate the surroundings for your Revit. Do you use massing, do you use a different approach, what's the easiest and the fastest way to create uh, the surroundings or the, 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 the context for your Revit model. Uh, and that kind of fits in perfectly to the, what we're going to be talking to, about today and that is, well, actually generating that surroundings in Revit. So we're not going to be modeling that, we're not going to be creating it ourselves, we're just going to be generating that uh, by using a plugin. So we're going to be using the Placemaker plugin for Revit. Uh, it's a plugin that's used uh, the, or that works both for Revit and also there's a version for SketchUp. And what it does, it allows you to connect data from different sources and bring it into Revit and then apply it to actual or turn it into actual Revit geometry. Uh, so what the this Placemaker uh, plugin does, it allows you to find, uh, first of all, it allows you to load in some really high quality aerials uh, from different sources. So one of the sources is near map and that actually goes up to seven centimeters. So you can get the idea of just how, how high quality the image is and how clear it is. Also there is map box and hexagon. Uh, they have pretty much global coverage uh, almost any place in the world you can get data from but it doesn't stop there it doesn't stop uh, with the aerials uh, also you can load in terrain from cesium and they load in this uh, or it, it, the, the plugin allows you to load in the terrain data and it turns that into actual Revit topography so you can find the location you turn that into Revit topography you can apply a high quality aerial image over that and then you can take it even further. So you can actually scatter the buildings so it can actually find uh, data for the for the buildings, for actual 3D geometry buildings, roads, paths, railways, uh, even uh, vegetation like trees in some areas and it can adapt that to your topography. So it can adapt the, the houses on, on the different elevations of topography, it can place the uh, it can place the, the roads there, the paths and pretty much anything. So it's a a really powerful tool. It connects all of these different sources and then it gives you a completed terrain. You can, And also you have even a water that you can load in, which is also really useful and I'm going to be explaining that a bit later on. Uh, so anyways, that's what this does and uh, full disclosure, uh, this video is sponsored by Placemaker, so that's something that I would like to note. Uh, and uh, yeah, I think it's really powerful. Here I'm just going to open up here, you can see the website. Uh, so. This is the placemaker for Revit add-in. Uh, and you can try it out here. Uh, there are a couple of options you can go for. You can get this absolutely free. And then you use credits, uh, which you can purchase on the website. And then you spend those credits to get data. Now, some data is cheaper, some data is more expensive. For example, the terrain, the buildings, the roads, that's cheap. And and then the, the, kind of the more expensive stuff is the high quality images that you can get. And it obviously depends on the, on the, on the quality you want to get. Lower the quality, it's cheaper, and then higher the quality, it's more expensive. Uh, now here, uh, as I said, there are a couple of options. So if I go here to shop now, placemaker for Revit, you're going to see that we have a couple of options. We have pay as you go, which as I said, with credits, and then also you have a subscription bundle with which already gives you credits. Uh, but then on top of that, um, uh, you can get kind of cheaper cre credits later on or cheaper uh, cheaper data uh, later on. So when you're paying for some, uh, let's say, high quality aerial images, uh, you get that cheaper if you have a subscription than if you have the pay-as-you-go plan. So it's really dependent on what you need it for. So if you just need a few sites during the year, like three sites, well, then may maybe it makes sense with pay-as-you-go. But if you have maybe more than that, you have a lot of sites that you want to generate your uh, kind of surroundings uh, for, then perhaps the subscription bundle is the better option. Uh, now. 
let's jump into Revit and let's actually go over how this works inside of Revit. Now, if you want to check out the actual website, I'm just going to leave a link down in the description of this video and then also up in the cards above. So check it out if you're interested. But anyways, when you go there, when you download and install the add-in, it's going to appear over here on your, uh, on your ribbon. It's just a new tab and then it looks like this. Now you can log in, as you can see here, I'm logged in, Balkan Architect, and these are the credits that I currently currently have. So let's now use this and generate uh, some uh, generate a site for our project. So what you want to do first is you want to go here to select place. So that's where you kind of specify which uh, place you want to get data for. So I'm just going to go here to select place and it just opened this up on my second screen. So let me bring it in and resize it a little bit. So basically it looks like this. And here you can type in an address or just a location, what, where is your kind of project location or what site you need. So I'm just going to say, I don't know, let's go with Seattle and let's see. So it's just going to give us a little drop down here. You can select different uh, results. I'm just going to go like this and then you can actually kind of navigate around and find uh, a, a site that you're happy with. So let's say I want to have something here. So it has a little bit of terrain, has a, has some houses and so on. And then to select the kind of actual area, you go here to select area and brings up this window and you can actually resize the actual kind of uh, window that's going to be used to grab the, the site. So you can kind of zoom in here, perhaps something a bit larger. Let's say something like that. You can obviously move around and then you just select the, the area that you, that you need or the area that you want, perhaps like, I don't know, let's go here. There we go. And then you just click on import area. Uh, so what this is going to do, it's going to generate a new 3D view. So as you can see here, 3D view one, and it's, yeah, it's just a 3D view. And then if I select this, you're going to notice that this is just topography. Now, don't worry. These aren't the high quality aerials that they've been talking about. We're going to get to that, but this is just kind of to, to specify the site that you're kind of getting data for. Okay, so once we have this in place, the next step is to import the terrain. So the topography, the, the how, how, what is the shape of the terrain. So for that, you go here to feature imports, you go to import terrain, and it's just going to open up this window here. You can specify the uh, CCM, uh, CCM is where you, is the kind of the, the supplier of the terrain data. And here you can specify the grid spacing. Now, currently this is at 10,000 millimeters, uh, which is like 10 meters and this is perfectly fine for this particular project uh, and it's really going to depend on the, the the project location if you're in perhaps a kind of a more urban area uh, you might get uh, even up to one meter kind of grid for your terrain and then in some cases it might be larger uh, in this case I'm just going to go with 10 meters I think it's more than enough so I'm just going to go here to save and import you just click on that you select that terrain and then if we just wait for a few moments, it's going to bring up this window here. And this is where those uh, credits uh, are kind of, uh, this, is, this, this is where we use them. So as you can see, it's it's going to specify the provider, CZM Ion, uh, product data. Here you can see six tiles for the terrain. That's kind of the general size of the terrain. And the required credits is here, you can see six. So I can just confirm that order. And you can notice that here, the number of credits is just going to drop by six when you load in this terrain data. And if I wait for a few moments, yeah, this is what we get. So here's the terrain. And actually, as you can see, it's actually high quality terrain. If I zoom in, uh, there we go. So let me just select this. Perhaps to see this better, let's go to the site plan. There we go. And this is the terrain. See all of the little contour lines. It's really high quality. If I go into edit surface, you can see that it divided this whole thing into points. And then if you zoom in and if you measure between the points, it's 10,000 millimeters or 10 meters. So that's that number that we have uh, specified earlier. 
So there we go. Now we have our terrain. Uh, looks really good. Now let's do something about the image. So as I said, this is not the actual high quality aerial. For the aerial, uh, what we want to do here is go to import imagery. It's going to open up the, the window here. So as you can see, this is the uh, image import settings. Uh, now here you can specify the source. You can go with the map box, near map or hexagon. Uh, depending on the on the source. Uh, here you can uh, zoom. So here the zoom is basically defining the quality of the image. You can go with max, high, medium, low. Let's go with high for this one. Uh, use most recent data. Of course we want that and then we can just save and import. So you click there, you click on the terrain and then you wait for a few moments. You're going to get another Kind of prompt here. Uh, so here again, uh, this is going to tell us uh, how many credits this is going to cost. So as you can see, the provider it's near map, uh, the imagery it's 3D tiles. So that's because we have kind of a more high quality uh, image, and then the credits required is 150. And also here you can see I have a subscription, so I've actually saved 60 credits because I'm subscribed. If I if I didn't have the subscription, this would be well, 60 credits extra on top of this. Uh, and uh, as I've mentioned before, you, you will notice that the images cost the most. That's just because that data basically cost the most uh, from all of the data that we're using here. But then the rest of it, it's, it's uh, quite inexpensive. So if I just go here to confirm order, wait for a few moments, it's going to download those images. And it's not only going to download the image, it's going to apply it on our topography. So uh, obviously it's going to take a bit more because we've chosen the high quality images, but the end result is of course going to be of higher quality. Uh, you can notice now the images are now being generated. And if we wait for a few mo more uh, moments to load in all of the, or to generate all of the images, now you can see those images have been applied as tiles and we can zoom in and as you can see this is really really high quality and this wasn't even the maximum quality but as you can see this is this is really really good uh, so you can obviously use these images here for your site you can see even the sea looks really good from these images so anyways once you have loaded in the high quality images uh, the next step is going to be to load in some buildings so if I Create, click here on import buildings. It's going to bring up this menu for uh, buildings import settings. And here you have a couple of sources. I'm just going to go with OSM, uh, 3D buildings. Obviously we will want that. You can specify the building height, the building level, uh, randomized heights. And the important thing to check here is the merge with surface. What this is going to do when you check this on, when you generate the buildings, the uh, the buildings are, in, uh, are going to be kind of adapted to the surface. They're not going to be flat. They're going to be adapted to this 3D topography. So now you just click on one of these tiles and it's going to give you a little warning saying, do you just want to generate buildings on this particular tile or on all tiles? Now, obviously we want it on the, kind of the, the, the whole topo surface. So we're just going to click yes. So it's going to take into consideration the whole topo surface. And as you can see, it's got 318 buildings, which is now generating. And it's obviously generating uh, these buildings a lot faster than you would if you had to do this manually. Uh, this would be a nightmare. I mean, 300 buildings, yeah. I wouldn't want to do that, that, do that. See, and as you can see, all of the buildings are now generated and they are at kind of proper elevations set here on that topography. This looks really good. Okay, so once we have the buildings in place, the next step is to import roads. So you click on import roads, and then again, it's the same uh, source of information. Again, merge with surface. Uh, this is important, check that on, so the, the roads will follow the actual topography. Click save and import, and then you, again, you just select one of the tiles, you tell it that no, not just that tile, the entire topo surface, you click yes, and now it's just going to generate those roads. See, as you can see, we have uh, 34 roads that are now being created and they're going to be kind of adapted over our topography. So let's wait for a few moments there for it to generate and there we go. Now we have the roads uh, and I think if, if you can see them, there we go. So as you can see, this is just a, a generic model. So everything is going to be kind of adapted to Revit uh, model elements. So if you select the buildings, they are generic models. If you select the roads, 
they are generic models and if you select these tiles they are topography i think they, they are just kind of uh, sub regions of our whole topography these kind of image tiles uh, obviously we can uh, take this forward you can go with uh, import paths so if i just bring that menu up here so here you can actually specify the width of the path it's the same thing with roads you can specify the width and then you save an import so if it finds any uh, paths here on this area it's just going to generate those so as you can see we have nine paths so it's just adding those to the model and now if i can see them yeah, I guess. Okay, here we have some paths there. Yeah, this is pretty much kind of an urban area, so we have more roads than actual paths. But there we go. We have some paths here going on here and here. Yeah, so we do have some paths. Uh, also, you can import rails. Uh, in this case, I don't think that makes too much sense just because it's a, that type of a site. I don't think it has any rails here. Uh, also, we can import trees. So this is really going to depend from uh, project location to project location. Not all of them are going to have trees, but let's yeah, let's try it for this one. So again, merge with surface. That's important. Uh, here you can specify the the spacing, the heights, and then let's save and import. Specify this. There we go. And let's see, is it going to find some trees for this particular location? It's kind of searching. There we go. We have. Okay, did it say 45 trees? Well, let's see, now it's adding those objects, so we wait for a few moments. There we go, it generated some trees. Again, as I said, it's not going to be perfect, the, the tree data, but uh, I'm going to take what I can get because, yeah, placing these and modeling these, yeah, that would take a lot of time. So this, it's definitely useful. Uh, now, moving forward, you also have water. Now, it might not make sense uh, why would you want to generate water, uh, but why I think it's useful is because if you want to then create some sort of a visualization inside of some sort of either third-party rendering engine or something like that, uh, you want to have like a... Uh, like a an, like an actual model surface that you can use for generating that water so it's really useful that it kind of brings that in for you so again it's the same source make sure to check merge with surface save and import again it's the same kind of set of steps and now it's just going to kind of find that water line and it's going to load in that water generic element so let's 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 just wait for a few moments there we go so we have some water here as well so there you go. That's how you kind of generate this. Uh, <laughs> that's how we've generated this whole site. As you can see, I really like the images. I really like um, all the 3D buildings. That's that's what that that that's really really important. Uh, here we have the water, which seems to be a bit higher. So we can obviously go and just change the elevation or something. And now it moved it a bit higher. So if I just move it down, that would be much better. There we go. So there we go. Now you have the water, you have everything, uh, and you have the, 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 the terrain, the buildings, the imagery, and so on. So I think it's a really powerful tool for generating uh, your site in Revit. It's really quick, saves, well, quite a bit of time. If this is something that you do on a regular basis, I think it's, it's a must have, but there you go. Uh, so I, I hope you have enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoy this tool. As I said, it's going to be linked uh, below the video and up in the cards. And also please tell me in the comment section below, what do you think about this? Is this something that you might find useful? Do you, do you want to use this in your kind of your current workflow so uh, please tell me that in the comment section okay so thank you for watching the video and i'll obviously be back with another regular balkan arctic tutorial in a couple of days have a nice day thank you for watching guys make sure to check out my website balkanarctic.com for more uh, revit courses uh, there i have over 120 hours of content uh, and i'm adding more each week make sure to subscribe for more videos and also I've added a video over there that might interest you as well.